Just precis. So my name is Christina Hök, or uh, Professor Hook is also fine if you don't if you don't deal with the dots. Um, and um, I found the seminar today to be amazingly interesting, and a lot of it has been on how we should, in certain ways, reconnect with nature uh, and with ourselves and so on. So I'm going to talk about that perhaps from a different perspective, namely the fact that we have a body. <laughs> and that's another piece of nature that we sometimes sort of forget, at least in my field. So I'm working within uh, computer science, creating technology for people to use and so on. And a lot of that has been very much focused on whatever we can squeeze in here and here and then get out through our fingers uh, and very little on our bodily interaction with the world. And what is interesting with, with body <laughs> is that it also connects very strongly to emotion and reason. So it might have been that we used to think that uh, emotion and reason are sort of separated. If, if you want to be rational, you need to move away from your emotional uh, things. But as it turns out, there's a sort of a wave of research that is reconnecting body, emotion and reason into one. So if you want to be rational, you should be rational together with your emotion and together with your body. So of course we can't continue to build technology as if people didn't have any bodies or emotions. We have to start from that instead. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that, but it, it may sound to you as, as a contradiction so far, doesn't it? You know, body, emotion, sociality and technology sounds really wacky. Uh, and perhaps to some this is what you sort of imagine. Um, some geek putting on a lot of technology on their fingers and, and their head and a camera and and virtual reality and, and so on and so on. <clears throat> and this is perhaps a little bit what it looked like when we started sort of investigating what we can do with body and, and emotion. So what this system is doing in particular is that it's trying to register your emotional states. In a way, a little bit as if you were a machine, as if your body was something that we could just measure and look at and then we could know what you're feeling. Okay, so that I find slightly problematic, and I'm going to go through uh, why I think that that is a problematic view on what it means to be human. Um, but another more interesting development, perhaps, is the Wii mode. I don't know if you've, if you've seen that, that you can play games by using a V control that has an accelerometer in it, so you can wave around and you can do, for example, bowling. And so here we see some people doing bowling. And when you use that, I don't know how many of you have been using the Wiimote? A lot, yeah. So you've had fun, haven't you? Yeah? And it was great to use your whole body in that interaction. Um, and so this, I think, is, is perhaps more inspirational in a way. How can we sort of build on using our bodies as part of interaction in, in ways that sort of makes us uh, involved in the interaction? Just, just to make it clearer to you how strong this connection is, can I ask you to stand up? <laughs> And then we put our arms up, and let's laugh together. Yoo-hoo! Yay! <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? And then we sit down, and you squeeze your body into a very narrow position. And you use all your muscles, and you become really tense. And now let's laugh. Yeah. So, did you feel the difference? <laughs> There was a huge difference, wasn't there? You know, so there's this thing that uh, emotion is not only something that starts from uh, sort of a, a cognitive stimuli or whatever. Emotion is also something that can start from a very social, bodily thing. If you stand up dancing, you will get into the groove, you'll get into the move, while if you do more sort of inwards, tight movements, you have a different experience. So this is something that I found really cool. So we started to build systems in like 2003, 2004, that sort of build on, on this idea that we can make people really involved with technology. So this particular system is called Emoto. <laughs> At that point, we thought that Japanese names were really, really cool. So we wanted it to be named Emoto. Uh, what it is, is it's just a very simple text messaging service. So you have your mobile phone and you write your text message, and this particular phone is one where you have a touch-sensitive screen, so you have this pen, a stylus pen that you use to, to write your message. So here somebody's writing, I'm so happy for you, Sandra. 
But then we also extended that pen with uh, some sensors. So it has an accelerometer and a pressure sensor, which means that if you wave it like this, if you squeeze it really hard and you wave it really hard, then you express more negative uh, emotions. If you, on the other hand, do big billowing movements with a looser grip on the pen, you express something else. And depending on what you express using your body and these movements, different backgrounds will appear uh, to your text message. So in this case, this uh, girl has been doing a, a happy movement, energetic, upwards, kind of loose in the hand, and she's getting these bubbly things in the background of her, of her message. It's like champagne bubbles going blah, 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 all over. And then this is what she actually uh, sends to her friend. And so the backgrounds, uh, I don't have the animations here, I'm sorry about that, but you can imagine that the bubbly one is really energetic. Uh, the, the one in the middle, the blue one, that's like a billowing, slow, beautiful movement that harmonizes really well if you move your pen back and forth in a slow movement. Uh, and this one over here is just an angry one with more like angular shapes that move in very sort of uh, negative ways. Um, so this is what you send to your friends. So I just want to show you some data from the study we did with this, <laughs> just to show you that the system actually exists. So here we have a user who's sitting around in the morning um, reading her newspaper, and she's sending a message to her friend, and she's also listening to music at the same time. Um, and as you see, she'll, she's writing a message, and then after writing that, she's trying to make a happy movement. <laughs> which changes the background of her message to be sort of happy and, and nice. Um, and actually in this study, we had people filming each other, so she doesn't even know that she's being videotaped at this point, which you can see sort of, sort of on her face at the end of, of the video. So, um, so when you see this, maybe you think, well, how on earth can you send messages to people that only contain color and shapes and animations and, and some short text messages? How are people going to make sense of this? You know, how can you express yourself physically like that and send off these messages? It, it's not going to make sense to other people. Um, so in the study, we figured this out and actually it does make sense. So um, here is one message that Mona, one of our subjects, sent to her boyfriend, uh, where she says, I love you. <laughs> and when we talked to her afterwards about this message, she said that, um, yeah, 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 green is my favorite color, and my boyfriend knows that, so this is why it's green, because he knows that I think that green is a lovely color, just as lovely as he is, right? So he knows how to interpret this message from her, that she's trying to express her love for him. Um, and her friends, when we talked to them, they said, yeah, 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 Mona is a green person. When she wants to express something positive, she will be using green colors uh, because that's just her. Well, we have uh, somebody else sending a very, very similar message in a sense. Um, this is Agnes sending a, a message to her boyfriend saying, I love you, my couch potato. <laughs> um, but she's picked a completely different background. Um, this is the one we intended to be used more for very high energy sort of negative things. So the animations here you have to imagine are sort of moving around really quickly and negatively. Uh, but when she talked to us about this, she said, yeah, but my love for him is so high energy. So I needed that energetic kind of background. And so this is how in, he interprets that. Um, so from something as sim simple as this, you get very strong emotional messages across. Agnes's partner also told us that <clears throat> when she was using the, the system, that when she was happy, she showed that with her whole body. Not only her arm was shaking, but her whole body. And meanwhile, a huge slip, smile would sort of appear on her lips. So here we have a strong, involving interaction that we thought, this is really, really cool. Um, but let's move on. Let's, let's think more about what, what kind of stuff can we do, because this was a system where you very much express yourself strongly yourself. You decide yourself what you want to tell uh, other people. So I was still intrigued by that idea of, of putting sensors on people's bodies. Um, it's scary. It's really, really scary, but it's also very, very interesting. 
So I wanted to see, can we design for a way of dealing with bodily data that does not take away our humanity from us, that doesn't make us into this, these machines that you can measure on. So we created a system that we call the affective diary. And here we have sensors. You can see the sensors are sitting on, on, on her upper arm. And they're picking up on how much you're moving. So that's just a normal pedometer, you know, like you, you, a lot of you have probably worn those at, at times. Uh, but it's also picking up on sweat. Um, so when we get emotionally aroused, when we get really angry or really happy, um, our sweat levels rise on, on top of our skin, in particular in certain places of the body. And we can measure that. Um, it's not a very reliable measure, but you can know certain things. You can know when it goes up and when it goes down to some extent. Okay, so we took that data. I'm just going to show you more in detail what we do. We take that data from your armband. So you have to take off your armband, plug in a little cord into it that goes into your computer. And then that data is translated into these blobby characters that you can see along the bottom of the screen. So if you've been moving around a lot, the blobby character will be standing up. If you've been moving very little, as you are now, your blobby character will be sort of laying down. Uh, and then we take everything you have on your mobile, all the text messages that you've been sending, all the photographs that you've been taking, all of that stuff. And we put it along into the same diary thingy um, so that you get it along the same timeline. So in this window, you have like a one hour period where this person first has been sort of laying down or sitting down. Uh, and then moving around a bit and so on. And one photograph has been taken and some text messages have been coming in and sort of sent and so on. So, uh, and then what you can do yourself is you can scribble on top of this um, what you were experiencing at the time. But that emotional part of it, uh, we turned into the color of, of these blobby characters. So, if you've been emotionally aroused, the color of the blobby character becomes very red. Uh, but if you've been really relaxed, it goes all the way down to a very sort of calm blue color. So this is how we map the sweating to uh, the interface. So we used this system with a few users for, they used it for a month or more. Uh, and then we talked through their notes, the scribbles that they had made and the interpretations that they made of, of their own data. So here we see one situation where one of our users says, um, well, the scribbling says that Kim leaves at two I'm sentimental, sad, not sad, sad, happy, sad, Kim is good. Okay, uh, <laughs> when she talked to us about this, she explained what was going on. Kim is actually her son, and her son was going off to Paris. And she was sort of sad to see him go. At the same time, at some point in life, we have to see our sons leave us. Hard, <laughs> I know. But we have to see them go, so we can't really cry and be sad about it. So we're sort of sentimental sad, but not really sad sad. And when she talks about this, she's pointing to the orange character, character there, and she says, um, and then I become like this. Here I'm kind, of, I'm kind of both happy and sad in some way, and something like that. I like him. And then it's so sad that we see each other so little. And then I cannot really show it. Okay, so maybe it's good that she's not showing it. Uh, but on the other hand, she says that this kept being a pattern in her data that she could see repeated. She saw that whenever she was in an emotionally upsetting situation, like with her son leaving or uh, she was having a quarrel with her boss and so on, she would see that she wasn't really allowing herself to express that in the moment. But instead, what she would typically go, do is three, four hours afterwards, she would go jogging and have a sauna. So her way of letting off all of that emotional steam, she only did uh, on her own later uh, when she was all alone, rather than actually allowing people around her to see it. So she started to use the system as a way of training herself <laughs> to be more emotionally open and more sort of direct about uh, her own reactions to, to other people. Um, so just to show you some more uh, screenshots, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how, how things may vary, like you, you can walk around and really, you know, energetically and still be very sort of not, not sweating a lot, not being very emotionally aroused. Or the one I really like is this one, uh, because here somebody's actually meditating. So for an hour, this person is sitting down, going from a very aroused state, and then through all the colors down to a calm blue state. And she was really happy when she saw this. She said, ah, this means that my med meditation works, yay. <laughs> So, um, so what, 
what this system does is that it does use your, your bodily data, but it does not tell you how to interpret it. It only gives you these sort of clues and hints that at this point maybe you were more calm while at this point you were more aroused. And it doesn't really say whether you were aroused because you were really angry or because you were really happy or because you were really sad. It only says that something is going on here. Uh, and then it's really up to you to find your own patterns and your own interpretations of your data. And I can tell you that we saw some fantastic interpretations. Like somebody said, yeah, 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 you can see whenever I'm spiritual, uh, like here, for example, it's because I'm, I'm I, I, you can see that the lilac color is, is really sort of representing my spirituality. And so here I'm really spiritual. Okay, that made me really worried as a researcher. I was like, well, you know, it's only connected to sweating, but, <laughs> but to her, this state meant that she was connecting with uh, whatever it was that she wanted to connect with. <clears throat> so right now, what we're doing right now is, is actually building a system where rather than having sensors on you that you have to take off and then plug them into your computer and then sort of look at your own data afterwards, we're, we're looking at whether you can do it in real time. So you may have noticed I have some on me. <laughs> in fact, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and some here as well. <laughs> and there's a little thingy here. And this thing actually connects to my mobile. So if you had uh, binoculars at this point in time, you could see my personal data being displayed here. <laughs> ah, hang on. <laughs> uh, this is my data. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so now I went all red. Shit. <laughs> Uh, and I can actually see my pulse is, is terribly high. Oh, shit. Almost dying. <laughs> and that's from being on, on stage. So if you're interested in this, I can show you what my, my personal data looks like afterwards, um, if you're nice to me. Uh, but so I'll just, I'll just show you a little um, snippet of what it looks like. So the idea here is that we actually show... Uh, no. We didn't. What happened? Oh. Um, so here you see uh, the interface, what the interface looks like, and what you can do is you can scroll back in time, and you can see again we're using these colors, so the really bright color is when you've been very aroused, as I was now on mine. <laughs> uh, the blue one is when you're calm. Uh, the pulsating thing is actually your pulse, and then maybe you can see a little spinning wheel, and that's how much I'm moving around, so this is a pedometer or an accelerometer that you can use to, to, uh, to check how much I'm moving. <clears throat> okay, so we are taking real, f real feeding data in real time, streaming data from uh, your body via Bluetooth to your mobile so that you can get into a situation where you um, actually uh, sort of relax. So this is sort of related to stress and, and figuring out how to deal with stress in your life. So right now, for example, if I take a deep breath, let's do it together. Let's take a deep breath. didn't help much for me. <laughs> but, but at least I could see that my pulse was, was going down. So I can actually use this system in the moment to look at uh, how to sort of deal with my stress levels, but I can also use it to scroll back and find patterns in my own uh, behavior. So, uh, uh, so I started with this picture, um, and it's still looking like that, isn't it? It's still kind of ugly. I don't really want to wear this in my everyday life. So I think that um, what we need to look for when we move on is to look for sensor solutions that you actually do want to wear on your body. So this is a picture from Philips Design from some of my colleagues there uh, who created a, a solution that looks more beautiful. Um, but I think uh, we have to think about this not only in terms of beauty of the things that we wear, but also in, beauty, in terms of beauty when it comes to experiencing ourselves, our own body, with and through this technology. So you might still think, yeah, it's scary. It's still scary. Why does she want to put sensors on our body? I can listen to my own body without having to have a, a piece of technology in between. Why is she doing this? Well, the fact is that we have loads and loads of problems in our society, mostly in the Western world, but also rising in China and, and uh, India and so on, to do with people not listening to their own bodies. So I don't know how many in this room have had uh, stress syndromes. There are lots because you're all 
that kind of, oh, you don't want to admit it, do you? <laughs> I can tell you, women around 35 in this room, a lot of you have had stress syndromes. You've had your heart beating too much. You've had insomnia problems and so on. And so you're not listening to your body. You're not listening to your own, uh, your own system telling you, this is enough. I can't take this so anymore. Um, and I'm not saying that it's your fault. I don't think it's your fault. I think it's us together creating for that kind of society. And so we need to build technology that says, no, 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 this is not okay. We should not be going down that route where we make people so pressured so that they actually treat their bodies really bad. By that, I finish. Thank you.